Hi everyone, it's Lana here. Welcome back and welcome if you're new. This is Lana Summer Summit time. <laughs> In today's video, I'm showing you some updated hair growth tips. I know it's been a minute since I've posted hair growth tips, but you guys know that I'm the hair growth expert and I have recently had quite a lot of my hair cut off. I had about four or five inches cut off, so I am definitely trying to grow my hair back to the length that it was before. So right here, you can see my hair when it was its shortest, and then I grew it to its longest, and then right now, this is the length that it currently is, and I want to get it back to this long length, but I want it to be healthier. When it was this length, it really needed a cut. I hadn't been taking care of it, so it did need the length to come off. We'll talk more about that a bit later on in the video. So these tips that I'm about to share with you, these aren't just trending right now, they're not a fad. These are tried and true hair growth tips that work. They're backed up by science and I personally have been using them for years and I know that they work for me. So these are the tips that I'll be using in 2024 to grow my hair long again. If you wanna have long, luscious, flowing, thick, gorgeous hair, if you wanna be that girl, then keep on watching. So before we get into this, I also just wanna break something down. So when I'm talking about hair growth, I'm talking about two factors combined. So I'm talking about hair growth from your scalp, and I'm also talking about length retention, because we can grow hair from our scalp, but if we're not taking care of the hair that we have, we're not gonna see our hair getting longer. And the same goes for this. If we are taking care of the hair that we have, but we're really doing something wrong up here in our scalp or inside of ourselves, then our hair's not gonna grow and again we're not going to see our hair getting longer so there needs to be this combination of the two things you need to be growing hair from your scalp and you need to be retaining length and that is how you get long hair so with that being said let's get into the tips and as we go through them I'll tell you whether it's a hair growth tip or if it's a length retention tip and we'll just talk more about the tips okay so I've got my laptop right here I've written everything down and I've split it into sections so that it should be really easy to follow okay so the first section of tips that we just really need to get out of the way is basic hair growth tips. These are the fundamentals of growing your hair long. So let's get into these. Number one, no bleach. Bleach is inevitably going to dry your hair out. It changes the structure of your hair and leaves it damaged. There's no two ways around that. I know that people can have healthy looking hair that's bleached, but rarely is it truly healthy and you can look at examples like I think um in La Set's video for her hair growth you might remember that a few years ago like before the pandemic La Set always used to have this gorgeous springy curly blonde hair and it was through highlights and she kept it really healthy but it always stayed at a short length and she could never figure out why it wouldn't grow past that length as soon as she stopped bleaching her hair guess what happened it grew because what happens is you think you're taking really good care of it, you think that you're doing everything you can to make it grow and it must surely be healthy and surely there's some reason why it's not growing. The fact of the matter is the bleach damaged it. This is really the first length retention tip. So even though she was doing everything right to grow her hair out of her scalp, her hair wasn't healthy enough to retain its length. It was breaking and it wasn't getting any longer. Of course there are some other ways that you can color your hair. I recently colored my hair a little bit but there is no bleach involved. I had this done at Aveda. They gave me every issue that this wouldn't damage my hair so fingers crossed it hasn't. Okay number two in basic tips is no heat and I have been saying this for years. If you are a curly girl watching this video you will know the story of when you used to have healthy hair and then you started straightening it a bunch and then it started looking weird and then it started getting shorter and then it wouldn't grow anymore. That's also because of damage. This is another length retention issue. If you damage the hair, it's gonna break off and you're not gonna be able to retain any length. You're not gonna see your hair growing no matter what you do at the top if you're damaging your hair with heat. And I know that some people will watch this and say that they can straighten their hair and not see any damage. And I'm the same. I straighten my hair every once in a while, maybe twice a year if that, but here's something you have to understand. You are risking damage every time you straighten your hair. It could just only take one time. It could just be one time. It was a little bit too hot. You held it on for a little bit too long and that's it, the hair's damaged. So you have to be so careful about using heat on your hair if you're trying to grow it. And if you're somebody with curly hair, I would recommend seriously cutting out straightening altogether if you're really trying to grow your hair. And if you are using hair dryers and diffusers, 
have them at the lowest heat setting. I always keep mine at the lowest heat setting because there's no way I'm trying to damage my hair with heat because I love having long hair and I don't want it to break off. Okay, number three in basic tips is to trim the damage. This is another one I've been saying since day one. If you have got damaged ends, they're split, they're dry, they're straggly, cut them off. You might think, I'm trying to grow my hair long, why would I want to cut off the ends? Especially if it's quite a lot, like especially if it's quite a lot of damage. Why would I want to cut that off? I'll tell you why. Because you're growing healthy hair out of your head, you're taking really good care of it, it's growing, but the ends of your hair are damaged. They're split like this. And I've done this example before on my channel. If you guys remember this tip from before, let me know. But imagine this is a healthy strand of hair. This is a split end. Now it's growing and it's growing and it's growing and it's healthy right here. But all that happens is it splits and 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 it, splits and it keeps on splitting all the way up the hair. You're never going to get rid of those split ends. You need to chop them off at a point where the hair is still healthy. That way you will be able to retain length. If you keep the damaged ends, they are just going to keep damaging. They're going to keep splitting and you're not going to be able to retain the length. So that is a really counterintuitive point, but I think it's a very well known point. And so that's why it goes into basic tips. I did this myself. I also chopped quite a lot of my hair off. You don't have to chop everything off. It doesn't need to be extreme, but definitely try to get rid of most of your split ends and most of the damage at the ends. But don't do the thing where you go through your hair looking for individual split ends. That is a waste of time. Next tips then are under the category shampooing and washing. Okay so tip number four is to use moisturizing and hydrating shampoos and the reason for this is because shampoos can be very very drying particularly if they have sulfates. I don't want to tell you to not use sulfates because I do feel like they're very important in your wash routine just to clear out any gunk but they can be very drying, so I try to counteract it with a shampoo that is designed to hydrate. So the one that I used yesterday was by Purology. It's their hydrating shampoo. This is for dry, colour-treated hair. My hair has been colour-treated, and that's why I went with this. I felt like it lathered up really well. It got the job done. My hair felt clean, but it was also hydrated at the same time. So tip number five then is to clear your scalp of any buildup and any gunk. And this is really gonna be a hair growth issue. You need to create a healthy environment at your scalp to grow hair. So for this, you'll need something like a clarifying shampoo and you can use it once a month or twice a month. You wouldn't really want to use it in every wash because like I said in the last point, this type of shampoo can be very drying, especially those specifically clarifying shampoos they can be very drying so you want to kind of limit your usage of them but they are important once in a while to lift that gunk off of your scalp and give your head a good scrub and a good clean so with that you can also use a scalp brush which looks something like this and this is really going to help you to lift up any buildup on your scalp and that buildup could be skin it could be the natural oils from your scalp it could be product buildup but it needs to come up it needs to get off because it is going to be blocking the pores of your scalp okay so the next tip that i'll be following when it comes to shampooing and washing is that i will be doing pre-poo treatments my pre-poo treatment is not very like intensive it's not a big deal but basically it involves me coating my hair with oil and kind of detangling my hair before i go into the shower before i start shampooing so there's a couple of reasons for this so the oil is going to help protect my hair from any harsh action from the shampoo and also the oil helps me to detangle and i've really started to like detangling before the shower and that's because I just felt like if I already had tangles in my hair and then I go and stand under the shower head get my hair soaking wet and then I run a bunch of shampoo through it and like mess it all up the tangles go insane and tangles are never good for hair growth because you're gonna have to brush them out and no matter how gentle you are with brushing if there is an insane amount of tangles you're probably gonna end up with breakage. So I'm trying to avoid tangles as much as I can. So that's why I'm detangling my hair pre-shampoo. It during my pre-poo treatments. I'm not doing it while my hair's like just dry with nothing on it. I'm doing it with coconut oil on it. It helps add slip. It helps keep things soft and gentle. That tip kind of includes the pre-poo to protect your hair from shampooing and a pre-poo detangling session to protect your hair from 
future tangles. Okay, so the next section in this hair growth tips video is conditioning and nourishing. So tip number seven is that I keep my hair conditioned throughout the week. Never let it get dry. So I get questions all the time about, Lana, how do you do your refreshes? How are you rehydrating your hair? That is not something I have to worry about because my hair never gets dried out. I use a very intensive hydrating leave-in conditioner that ensures that my curls are quenched until the next wash day. I never feel my hair and think it feels dry. That just doesn't happen. You need to use a high quality leave-in conditioner to make sure that your hair does not dry out throughout the week. So my favorite product for that is the Rhyme and Reason Quench and Curl and it really does what it says on the label. It quenches my curls. They do not feel thirsty. So this is like a pretty big tub and I used to think this was really expensive. I don't know why, but I saw it in the shop recently and I realized that it's only like eight pounds, which really isn't too much given how good this product is. I absolutely love it. I've got it in my hair today. My hair does not dry out. I keep it nourished throughout the entire week. While we're on the topic of conditioners, let's talk deep conditioners. So this takes me to point number eight. You need to be deep conditioning your hair on a regular basis. I recommend once per week. So I usually wash my hair once to two times per week. And on at least one of those times, I will be using a deep conditioner. So it's usually something like this. This is the Aveda Nutriplenish treatment. This is a deeply hydrating hair mask. And I have a bunch of them like this. I use ones from Vita Coco, Coco and Eve. I also use the Aveda a botanical and that one's more of a strengthening treatment rather than a hydrating treatment but they're all really important to use as part of your routine it goes without saying they are deep conditioners and they will get your hair into the best condition possible so those last two points were actually length retention points and this next tip is going to be a hair growth point so it's hair growth oils so i love a good quality hair growth oil like this one by grow gorgeous i actually used basically all of this. So these are just going to be really great at nourishing your scalp and fostering a great healthy environment to help hair grow from your scalp. You could also combine that with a head massage. So what you do is you drop these onto your scalp and you massage them in. So the oils themselves are going to be really nourishing. On top of that, when you do the massage, what you're really doing is you are stimulating the hair follicles on the scalp. You are creating a tingling sensation and that's bringing blood to the area and the blood carries the nutrients from around your body and that nutrients is essential to creating healthy hair. So it's really a good idea to just encourage that kind of blood flow to your scalp and that's really going to encourage healthy hair growth. So I love to do that when I'm doing my hair oils. All right, let's talk lifestyle hair growth tips. Did you know that we spend a third of our lives sleeping? So you better be taking care of your hair while you're asleep. So I mean, sleep with your satin bonnet, sleep with a satin pillowcase, do everything you gotta do. I personally sleep on a satin pillowcase and a satin bonnet because I feel like the pillowcase is good for my skin and I don't like to have my hair on the pillow and then that on my face because there's products on my hair and it's going to give me acne so I just like to do both. If you guys were looking for a bonnet these are the bonnets I use. These are from my brand Hedgy Hair. So Hedgy comes from our headbands. It stands for headband and scrunchie because they can be worn as a headband and a scrunchie at the same time but we also do hair bonnets. So this is our bonnet. It comes with a tie so you can tie it up and that means that it doesn't come loose during the night. It means it never loses its elasticity so it's going to last you a really long time and it's not too tight. You can loosen it, tighten it however you like. It's also reversible so you can wear it on the pink side if you prefer that. I usually wear it on the black side to be fair and when I do it up I do it with a cute little bow. And I gave this to my sister. My sister was like, my sister was like literally crying to me because she left one when she went on holiday she left hers and she was like oh no my bonnet I'm gonna have to get them to send it back I was like I will give you another one but yeah she says that they're like the best she never uses anything else now she was like oh my gosh it never falls off my head so I'm like I know <laughs> yeah those are my hedgy bonnets I will leave these linked down below by the way so these are made from a polyester satin weave I prefer satin over silk because satin is vegan silk is not the softness of the satin is going to prevent frizz tangles and breakage while you sleep so it's very very, very essential. Tip number 11 then is to also use satin scrunchies whenever you tie your hair. So I'm just going to show you what a head she looks like. So 
These are the headsheets from my brand. They can be used as a headband and a scrunchie. So they're super versatile. I will also leave these linked down below as well. When you use them as a scrunchie, these are great for when you're working out. Like they literally do not let your hair fall down. Okay, so the next lifestyle tip then is to live a healthy lifestyle. I know, I know no one wants to hear this. I know nobody wants to hear this, but I promise you it makes all the difference to every aspect of your appearance, to your mindset, everything. I feel like it's so, so important. So what I'm talking about here is making sure that you're prioritizing whole foods, getting your protein in. I'm not gonna suggest vitamins. I have suggested vitamins in the past, but I have noticed a pattern where whenever I'm consistently taking hair growth vitamins, I tend to break out and start getting really bad acne. I think it's something to do with the biotin and the folic acid. So I try to avoid that now. So healthy diet, also working out, making sure that you're getting that blood flow going around. Try to do a little bit of cardio, really get that blood pumping and getting enough sleep. Like sleep is so, so important. When you have this kind of healthy lifestyle, your body can operate in the most optimal way. So your skin is gonna be glowing, your hair is gonna become thick and full. There's really no downside. Okay, so the next section of hair growth tips is hairstyles. Okay, so the next tip then is to focus on low tension hairstyles. So think about a simple low bun rather than a tight, sleek, high bun. There's two things that are gonna happen when you're doing these tight hairstyles and they're really sleek. So first of all, you're really gonna be pulling on the hair, especially the hair at the front, and this can actually pull the hair out around your edges or if you're always tying it here you might start to see like some hair thinning right here i don't even know if that's like a length retention issue or if that's a hair growth issue because you're literally pulling it out at the scalp the next thing that's going to happen is if you're tying your hair very very tightly if you are really getting this hair tie around like as tight as it will go that is inevitably going to be putting tension on the hair itself and you could start to see breakage like around about here you might start to see that you just have random short bits of hair like you don't remember cutting it but like why do you have random bits of hair that are only this long usually because of these tight hairstyles that we're doing so if you want to avoid damaging your hair avoid tight hairstyles and focus on something a little bit gentler like a low bun or just wearing your hair down like this or a simple braid or something low tension so the next tip in hairstyling is to give your curls a break and this is different to the last tip because the last tip was about like hairstyles this tip is about styling your actual curls so for me what i noticed was that i was kind of addicted to brush styling or you know these curl enhancing styling techniques like they're huge on TikTok there's always seems to be like a new way to get your hair to make ringlets and things right and I realized that I had started doing that with probably every wash it just became second nature I would do my wash and I'd do the demo and brush thing every single time that causes for me anyway that causes a lot of tangles later on in the week like there's so much definition and the curls are so tightly wound that they just end up so tangled towards the end of the week and that's no good like i said earlier in this video that means you're gonna have to do more detangling more brushing inevitably more breakage so we don't like tangles but another thing that i noticed is that when you're holding that brush against your hair especially when you use uh the demon brush or something similar like that or the one that has the little grooves on it when you're using a brush like that you have to put tension on the back of the brush to kind of get it to curl around when i started to think of this as like when you're curling a ribbon, right? Like I don't know if you've ever tried to curl a Christmas ribbon and you will take the scissors on one side and you will brush the scissors down one side. What you've essentially done is you've shaved off one side of the ribbon. So one side of the ribbon is now, has less fibers in it, it's kind of shorter. And then that's what causes it to pull in tighter on that side and then it creates a curl. So I started to think of it like that and I started to realize Am I damaging my hair when I'm putting tension on one side? And honestly, I don't know what the science behind that is, but I just stopped liking the idea of putting so much tension on just one side of my hair and then watching it bounce up again. Um, I still love it every now and then, like I still love to brush style, but I'm trying to give my hair a break from that and just not do it quite so much. Like I realized my hair is happiest when I just leave it alone. I wash it, I deep condition it, I put my leave-in conditioner in it and I scrunch it through, no more brushes involved and I just leave it and my hair is so happy and it stays so soft all week and it doesn't tangle up. So I just think that is so good for my hair to just 
leave it alone. Okay, so the next tip in hairstyling is to not lay your edges. So this is kind of similar to the other hairstyling point about putting tension on your hairline. Like we really don't need to be putting tension on our hairline. We really don't need to be putting thick, heavy products directly onto our scalp. They're gonna clog our pores. It's gonna put tension on our hairline and it's just not going to encourage hair growth. If anything, when I was laying my edges all the time, I started to see my edges thinning. Hence why I had to use the Grow Gorgeous Oil to grow my edges back. So I have not been laying my edges now probably for a, a couple of years, a good couple of years, and now my hairline is as thick as ever. Okay, so there you have it. Those are my 15 hair growth tips for 2024. These are tips that I'm already using, but I'm definitely going to ramp up this year to try to grow my hair to the length that it was before, except healthier this time. Healthy hair is always the goal. So I really hope that you liked this video. I really hope it was helpful. It's been so fun to jump on here and talk about hair care again. I feel like I haven't done that for a while. If you have any video suggestions, drop them in the comment section. If there was anything that you want to go back over, feel free to rewind the video and go back to that part and just write that down. And give me a like if you liked the video. Subscribe and turn on your notifications as well because I'll definitely be back with more videos soon. Also get me on Instagram because I am over on Instagram all the time and TikTok and I'm doing a lot of lives on TikTok right now so if you want to see me on live if you want to just chat to me and hang out then TikTok's the place to be so that's at Lana Summer X. All of my information is linked in the description box down below. Thanks so much for watching this video all the way through to the end it means so much to me that you are here. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Yeah, yeah.